that Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning. Welcome to our missionary stories. We're so thankful that you tuned in. You know, we have been learning about a little boy from Mexico, and this is exciting. A miracle, a miracle for Samuel Lito. We're going to find out today or next week the miracles that God did to show that he does answer prayer. This is one of the things we're going to be talking about today is prayer and a miracle. So as you tune in, we are turning to chapter 9 of John once again about the blind man. And we saw that Jesus healed the blind man. And he, they wanted to know who had sinned, him or his parents. He said neither. But that the works of God should be manifest in him. So those of us that suffer, God is allowing that to happen so that he may be glorified. We must always know this. We must always believe this. And when we suffer with physical conditions or whatever God is allowing to happen, it is to teach us faith in him. Today, you're going to learn about a little boy that had faith like we should have. And I pray that each of us, when we finish hearing these stories, we will pray more for our children all over the world. So he opened his eyes. God told him to go and he said, go and wash. And he made clay, of course, and put on his eyes. And he said, go and wash. But first he had to be obedient to the Lord. And he went and washed and obeyed and he came seeing. And then we know that the Pharisees and them, they asked him how he was healed. He said, he put clay upon mine eyes and I washed and do see. You see, he had faith to believe he obeyed. You must obey the word of God to be pleasing to the Lord. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So anyway, they cast him out of the temple. And of course, when they cast him out, Jesus knew. Now, that's the first thing you must understand in all these lessons. Once again, we're telling you these things, that when someone rejects you and despises you, or makes fun of you and treats you bad. If you're a child of God, that is drawing you into the hands of the loving arms of our Savior. This is what happened with him. And he told them, and this is one of the things that this blind man knew. He said, God heareth not sinners. They accused Jesus of being this fella, they called him. And he said, this marvelous thing is done. And he said, if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, he heareth him. This is one of the things that we must all ask God to teach us true worship. As we are listening to these lessons, we must go back in the book of John and see what he teaches us in these lessons in chapter 4, the woman at the well. And he said to her, and this is what we have today. He says, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. And this is what this man said. If any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. And since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of the blind? 
You see, to be in spiritual darkness is much worse than being in physical darkness. So we see that they answered and they said, Thou wast altogether born in sin, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. You see, this is John chapter 9 and verse 34. And then verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And Jesus found him. You see, our eyes are to be upon Christ in everything that is happening. And we'll see that in this lesson. Dost thou believe on the Son of God, he said? Jesus said to him, and he said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe in him? And Jesus said, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. You see, this is what we're to do. This is real true worship after we become a child of God. And we're going to see that in all these lessons, how we are to have faith and believe His Word and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we are asking that Thou will teach us true worship every person that's listening today, that we may worship Thee in spirit and in truth. The Father seeketh such to worship. May every person that is listening today call upon Thee to save them, to bring them out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan under Thee. May they understand that the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. And for every true believer today, may we pray that we will have the mind of Christ and that we will obey Thee in all things. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So this little boy had never heard the Word of God. He heard the truth about the wordless book. He was being taught the wordless book for the first time. And the teacher that taught him, she told him about how wonderful heaven was. And she told him about the gold page that stands for heaven, and of course the dark page that stands for sin, because Satan's kingdom is a kingdom of darkness, and God's kingdom is a kingdom of light. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And then the white page is the righteousness of Christ. That means I have been declared righteous by God. When he heard these truths, he was afraid to tell his parents. And then he heard it again when him and his sister were selling lizards on the highway. You see, he was a shoeshine boy, and he was 11 years old and had never been to school. And he was making money to go to school. They had a little pot that they called his money crock. And this was everything he made went into this crock. So we saw how his mother heard from his little sister that he was listening to this woman, this missionary. And she told him that maybe when his father came home that he may not even go to school. And she screamed and she yelled. Well, they waited. He sat down and he waited for his father to come. His father didn't come, so they ate breakfast without him. And she was looking for him until noon. All the time she would go and she would look. And she knew something had happened to Papa because he did not come home the way that he always did and the time that he always did. So they were kept looking and waiting. They saw their neighbor coming up the hill with his burrow. So Samuel Leto went down to meet him. And he said, this is news for your mother. This is news for your mother. And he wouldn't tell him. So he raced back up to the house where they lived. And when he got there, she started screaming, 
it is Papa. I know it is Papa. What has happened to him? What has happened to Papa? Is he, is he dead? He said, no, but it's not good news. When he was selling the pigs, remember the story about the pigs? That he would tie their legs, the back of their legs, and put them up on a platform to sell. And they would get the ropes tangled in their feet, and also they would cause him to go around in circles, and this time they pulled him off of the platform, and he is in the hospital. And she began screaming and screaming. And then the neighbors heard, and they came also. They had no word of comfort for her. You see, unless you're a child of God, you cannot comfort those. And those of you that are having trials today, you know what God's Word says? And this is important for us as true believers. He says in, now this is, this is so exciting. In our trials and everything that happens to us as believers, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds in Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for our consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. It is for God's glory. They knew nothing about that. So all they could do was come and cry with her and weep with her and feel sorry for her. Today, we as believers comfort people with the Word of God. This is what's important. So this little boy went and sat down. Now he had heard about the word this book twice. Now he sits here and he's thinking, oh, if my papa had have died, would he have gone to heaven? No, because he has never heard that Jesus Christ died for his sins. Oh, why didn't I tell him? I was a coward. I was afraid. Oh, but he would not have listened. I know he wouldn't have listened. He would have beat me. And then he said, how do I know that? Maybe he would want to believe like I want to believe. But he said, she told me that I must believe that Jesus died for me and that he rose again, and that his blood cleanses me from all sin, and I have eternal life. And he said, right now, I want to pray, and I want the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse me, and I want him to give me eternal life, and I want to tell him I'm sorry for my sins, and thank him for dying for me, and he had such joy, and, but yet there was sadness in his heart. And then he said, Lord, let me pray again. He said, can I pray once again? He said, I, I want to ask you one more thing. He said, the missionary said that whatsoever I'd ask the Father in my name, that he would give it me. And he said, I want my father to be healed and come home. And I want all of our family to be saved. So after this, he would go and he would sell the lizards on Saturday and Sunday. He 
would go and every day to the shoe shine, to the lunchroom, to shine shoes. Every day, the money began to go and to go. The money crock was beginning to get empty. As he would go and shine the shoes, the one thing that he wanted to see, he didn't care about the money anymore. He wanted to learn more about what the missionary had taught him. He wanted to see her so bad. He wanted when they would go on Saturday and Sunday and sell the lizards, he would look for the missionary. Do you desire to know more about God? If you do not, then you must not be a child of God. You must not be a child of God because you will desire his word and you will want to obey him. So one day while he's sitting out in his little place where he would go and pray, every day he prayed, every day he prayed for his father to be healed, every day he would pray for them to be saved. He didn't know anything else. So one day he's sitting out there and he sees this missionary coming up the hill to where they lived. And when he saw this missionary coming, he ran and wouldn't let her see him because he knew his mother would not let her in. Since she was a foreigner, she wasn't from Mexico, that he, she would not let her come in if she knew that this was the one that had been teaching him. So she came and she knocked on the door and she said, I heard about your husband in the village, so I came to give you some candy and some cookies. And she had such a sweet smile that she told her to come in. And she gave her sweet coffee, as they always did, and some cookies and candy that she brought they ate. And then when he came in, he waited to make sure that his mother would welcome her. When he came in, he, she said, oh, you're the one I have been teaching this little book to. And then he saw his mother's anger. Her sweet kindness turned to anger. And he said, oh, yes. And he was so excited that she was there. And he had told his mother, I know this is a good woman. I know that what she tells is true. So... He listened to what the missionary said to his mother. She said, I see that you are angry because I have been teaching your son at the lunchroom and then on the highway. And I will tell you what I told him. If you will not like what I have told him, then I will leave the village and not come back and teach your son anymore. And she agreed that she would listen. She listened as she told her the story of Christ's love for her. She told the story of, in my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. Every believer today must know these Bible verses, John 14, 2 and 3. She told her about heaven as much as she could about the mansions. And you see, she told him about the street that is pure gold and the city that is pure gold. And she said it's like a diamond in the sky. But she said, you know, that isn't what's important. The thing that is important is that we are going to see Christ. And we're going to see the nail prints in his hands where he died on the cross for us. And there's a Lamb's book of life in heaven. And our names are written in heaven. Our names are written in heaven. Do you know that that is the most important thing that can happen to you as a believer? 
This is a divine message from heaven, and your name is written there. How long has it been there? Before the foundation of this earth. Because he knew who was going to be saved. And all that is not written in the Lamb's book of life is cast into the lake of fire. She listened to all that he said, that this lady said, this missionary. And then after she was finished, she saw tears in her mother's eyes. He saw tears in his mother's eyes. And then she said to his mother, may I pray now? She prayed and she prayed for the father to be well again and to come home. She prayed for each member of the family to be saved. And she prayed that God would perform a miracle that Samuel Leto would be able to go to school. After she was finished praying, he said, I have already accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And now she had tears, a missionary did. And he said, if she's so happy, why is she crying? She gave him the wordless book. She said, maybe you will want to tell your mother and your little sister and even your papa about the little book that has no pictures and no words, but yet it tells the most wonderful story from the Word of God. After she left, she told him, I know that you will be able to go to school and learn to read. And when you do, I will send you a Bible of your own. So after this, he showed them the little wordless book every time. Every chance he got, he told them and told them. And she would say, tell me again this good news. Oh, I want to know about heaven. I want to know that there is a place like that for me. He would tell them, one day, the Spirit of God spoke to their hearts. And she said, I want now to become a member of the family of God. I want to know that I'm a child of God. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, you are in the family of God. You are in the family of God. Now, we must pray for Papa. They prayed and they believed. So, the day came when he was able to come home from the hospital. The ambulance brought him down in the village and they made a homemade stretcher to bring him up to the house and carried him, the neighbors did. Before he came, she cleaned everything. They only had a mud floor, and she cleaned and cleaned and cleaned everything. She had a neat home because she wanted everything to be the best for her husband and for her children. When he came, her father, his, his father had tears. Oh, I'm so glad to be home. I'm so glad to be home. After he was there for a while, he said, the crock, the money crock, is it empty? Samuelito said, no, Papa, no. I am going to be able to go to school. His mother said, you must sleep now. You must sleep. You must have a long siesta after you have had such a long trip. Now you sleep. When they went out of the room from where the father could not hear, why did you say that? Why did you say that? You know that you will not be able to go to school. How can God put money in the crock? I don't know how he can, but I know that she prayed and I know when the missionary prayed, she, he said, whatsoever you shall ask. And then another memory verse that I'm going to give you that he didn't know, you can believe this. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Ask and you shall receive. You can believe that. 
And you can believe this promise today. Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And he said she prayed, and she believed, and I believe. So because he believed, he knew that they were going to be saved. They continued to pray. When he would go and shine shoes, when they would go to sell the lizards, if they didn't sell them, he would bring them home so they could have a fine meal themselves. One day, he began to pray for the blind man. He prayed and he prayed. He said, I know you can't see these colors, but I want you to listen to the truth about heaven. Now next week, we will probably get into the difference in heaven and hell. One of the things that I want you to see today is heaven is a place of wonderful description. I want you to write these Bible verses down. Everybody, that's, I will give them to you again next week. Revelation 21.10, marvelously built, gloriously lighted. Revelation 21.23, Revelation 22.3, righteously governed. Christ is going to govern. We're going to have light continually. But let's see the place of hell and see which one you're going to choose today. It's a horrible description. Mark 9:44, where the worm never dies. The worms are going to be crawling all over your body. Revelation 21:8, burning in fire and brimstone. Why has God put us on the air? For you to be saved. And you can know that you can do something by giving out our New Testament. Every person, you can give these out. And if those of you that I have not told, this is where I grew up in Kentucky. And this is a picture of where we grew up and we had a two-room school, and there is a lake there called Buckhorn Lake. It has in it how to be saved, places marked for you to find everything that you need when your enemies, how to pray for them, how to pray for about fear, greed, and hatred. Do you have hatred? It has all the pages of every sin that you can turn to so that God will answer your prayers after you are saved. He cannot answer your prayer until you are born again. Tell the world that Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way the Lord is soon returning